Hi there everyone. We all know there are several steps that we need to get right if we want to have a really exceptionally well flying drone. And a key requirement is to have a build that is mechanically clean. And by clean I don't mean mud, grass, dirt. I'm talking about vibration. A clean build is one with minimal vibration and it's never been more important to minimize vibrations on your drone. In Betaflight 4.3, the default filtering on the gyro has been significantly reduced. And the reason that the devs have done that is that reducing the amount of filtering on the gyro reduces the delay within the flight controller. And less delay means better prop wash handling, better flight performance, and a more responsive feeling quad as well. However, reducing the filtering does mean that Betaflight 4.3 is a little bit more susceptible to noise and vibration than previous versions of Betaflight. Now, having a low vibration frame is one aspect of this. And if you want to hear more about some new low vibration frames that I've been working on, hang around to the end and I'll talk a little bit more about that. But what we're going to look at today is flight controller and ESC mounting and how to mount your flight controller and ESC to minimize vibration and the effect of different flight control mountings on black box logs. So there's no more time to waste, let's get right into it. So today we're going to be looking at logs that were taken on exactly the same quad in back-to-back -back flights and there's only one difference between the stack mounting on both quads and that's the addition of this golden nut here. So the first flights were done with a solid steel screw going through the carbon fiber frame and the flight controller and ESC which were both 20 by 20 mount are mounted on these shock absorbing gummies and the steel screw is going up through the whole stack and then there's a nut on the top and the nut has been screwed down to lightly compress the gummy so that everything is, is nice and stable and secure. In the second flight, the configuration was exactly the same, except this time I added an additional nut to cinch down on the carbon fiber frame. So now we have the head of the screw and the nut compressing that frame plate and it really secures this stack screw in place so that it cannot move at all. And then on top of that, we have the ESC and the flight controller, again mounted on the same shock absorbing gummies, and a steel nut on the top, just lightly compressing them and holding everything in place. So now we can look at some logs and see what a difference this golden nut can make. If we start by looking at the roll axis, and we're going to look at a gyro scaled log, so this is before any filtering has been applied to the gyro. Let's start by looking at the roll axis. Now this is the gyro scaled spectrogram, which means that it's what the gyro is measuring before any filtering is applied. Both logs have been trimmed to three and a half minutes, so that there's exactly the same amount of data. And that means that we can compare these logs side by side. On the left hand side, we have the configuration with no nut on the bottom of the stack. And on the right hand side, we have the addition of the golden nut. We can see that without the nut, there is more vibration across the whole frequency spectrum. And we also see quite a lot more spikes of vibration in the motor band and quite a large peak of noise at around 600 Hertz from what looks to be maybe the second harmonic of the motor band. We can also see that there's quite a lot more vibration down at lower frequencies below 200 Hertz. And this is gonna be really important for D-term noise, which we're gonna look at later. On the pitch axis, the situation is very similar. We have a lot more noise overall, just throughout the frequency spectrum. And we also see some slightly higher peaks, although it's not quite so significant at 600 Hertz as we saw on the roll axis. There's also a slightly larger hump of noise down here at low frequencies, around 50 Hertz, which is just not visible once the nut has been cinched down. So clearly this sort of broad peak of noise here is some vibration, some resonant mode of the stack itself. And when we add that nut to stiffen the stack up, that peak of vibration goes away. The yaw axis is I think the axis where we see the most significant effect 
of not having that nut at the bottom of the stack. Without the nut, we see a lot of noise at around 300, 400 hertz. It's quite a broad hump of noise. There are lots of peaks in there. And once we add the nut, we can see that the yaw axis becomes very, very quiet. And if we think about the mechanics of how the stack is mounted, although if the flight controller in ESC were to try and rock from side to side, the compression of the gummies would provide some stiffness. In the yaw axis, the flight controller in ESC are actually relatively free to rotate left and right as these steel stack screws lean left and right. And there's very little compression of the gummy to provide any absorption of that energy. So the stack becomes very susceptible to vibrations on the yaw axis. Once the nut is cinched down really tight, this screw can no longer lean to the left and right, and therefore the stack can no longer rotate left and right, and we see a much, much cleaner spectrum. If we directly compare the two logs in PID toolbox, we can see that the addition of the golden nut can reduce the vibrational noise by as much as six decibels on roll and pitch, and by as much as 10 decibels, or even more in some cases, on the yaw axis. So it really does make a huge difference just to add that one additional component. Another thing that's worth bearing in mind is that under 100 hertz, the noise is much, much higher without the nut cinching the frame down than with it. And this is going to be particularly important when we look at the D term. The D term is the term that is most responsible for bringing vibrational noise into the PID loop. And the reason for that is that the nature of the D term is that it reacts more and more strongly to vibrations at higher and higher frequencies. And this is why we always need low pass filters on D. And it's also why the D term ends up being the limiting factor for how far you can push the master gain slider when you're tuning your quad. As you continue to increase the D term gain, eventually the D term will bring too much noise into the PID loop and you'll start getting oscillations, ticking, and hot motors. We can see here that adding this golden nut to the bottom of the stack and cinching it down on the frame makes an enormous difference to the amount of vibrational noise that is brought into the PID loop by the D term on the roll axis. Without the nut, we have this really large red spike of noise just below 100 hertz. Once we add the nut and cinch it down, nothing else has changed but the amount of vibration that's coming into the PID loop is now much, much less. Exactly the same is true on the pitch axis. We have this large hump of noise going up into the red when we don't have the nut present, and adding the nut and cinching it down on the frame reduces that enormously, and it's now well in the green. We can compare this side by side using PID toolbox, and we can see that the noise on the D term is around six to 10 decibels higher without the nut in place than with it. Six decibels is four times the power and twice the amplitude of the vibration. So just adding this nut is gonna mean that we're going to be able to increase the D term maybe as much as twice what we had it at without the nut present, without getting any more hot motors or vibrations or oscillations. So Getting your stack mounting right can make an enormous difference to the maximum degain that you're able to achieve and therefore how responsive your quad ends up being to things like prop wash. I was really surprised to discover just how much difference adding that nut on the bottom of the stack makes to the amount of noise and vibration that we see in black box logs. Let me know down in the comments if this surprised you or if this is something that you've also experienced when you've been flying. If you're interested in minimizing vibration even further, a really good place to start is a frame that is specifically designed for low vibration. And I have some news that I wanted to share with you about some upcoming AOS frames. I'm excited to announce that the AOS 5 V2 and the AOS 5.5 V2 are now available in colored carbon fiber, blue, gold, green, and silver. So if you're looking for something a little bit more unique than just black, then those are available for you. And as before, you have a choice of standoff colors as well. If you're after something a little lighter, the AOS 3.5 V2 is now available at CNC Drones as well. 
And this is designed to go sub 250 grams, even if you're carrying something like an Insta360 Go. I'm going to do a full design description video of this frame in the coming days, but if you're looking to get your order in ahead of the queue, then uh, I'll put a link to this down in the video description as well. That's all I have for you for today, so until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.